Hi, everybody. This is Patrick Driggett bringing you the BS of the week. Number seven, our draft special for the season 34 draft that I'm joined by my friends. Hi there. This is Kevin Lucy from the Glasgow Rushmores. Ed Hastings from CSU 66ers. And I'm Phil Holton from the Lincoln Rapiers. Welcome, Phil. We're really glad to have you. Thanks for uh, being the commissioner of our, <laughs> our, of our draft this year. So well done. It was um, good fun. I would recommend it to anybody. Yeah, that was, really I, was. I, I yeah, I, I enjoyed it a lot. I was probably giving too many of my uh my too much input on my terrible picking order for you know people who are missing things, but uh no, I enjoy I enjoyed that process a lot. I, I really hope we can do more of the Zoom draftings, especially the first couple of rounds. I know there's you know kind of a debate about what the best format is, but I loved it as someone who's stateside and you know been in around the league for a long time. I enjoyed being able to like see everyone and, you know, participate in that fun. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, this is the draft special. We're going to be talking about the draft that has happened over the last three weeks. And uh, I'm just going to go into it with round one. Um, so first round uh, pick of the, of that round, you know, I, I, as I was telling you all earlier before we started recording, you know, I think that the first five picks you're either it's either an overreach entirely or it's just a good pick, right? Because you're probably getting good levels, good QSTs, right? Whatever. Um, it's it's the things in between that that start to get a little muckier, I think. And so for me, the the best pick, uh, there were quite a few good ones that we had, uh, you know, looked at, but uh, right at pick 31, last part of the draft there of, of the first round, um, the Giant Hornets got DT3. Perfect QSTs, 35, 65, level eight. Just, I mean, it's a you'll be able to get, get him in the starting lineup right away. Right. Like that's a, that's a great pick. Um, you don't need to do any under, you know, understudy or uh, development squad. Uh, I think it's a, just a great pick that late to have such a, such a good solid starter, um, you know, for years to come. Um, and then that brings me to the overreach, which is um, the Maroons uh, at pick 26. Yeah. At pick 26, the Maroons picked up OB2 uh ob2 it level nine great level but 45 55 you know no solid qst on either end there um it's a journeyman uh and 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 maybe that is okay but then the context is that ob1 and ob3 were available with better qsts and similar levels so i just i just really didn't see at pick 26 that needing to be the pick you know i, I if either one of those uh, ob1 or 3 were picked i would have been okay like i wouldn't even have batted an eye but i do think that ob2 was not really needed to be picked at that time in the draft um and so anyway that's my first round um, Phil, you have rounds two and three. Why don't you let us know what you thought about that? Yeah, this was this was a really interesting one because uh, after years of uh, question marks over some elements of drafting, I think the big sky has learned how to draft. Now, actually, I went and back and looked before this draft at my season eight and season nine picks. What was I thinking? It's quite an incredible mess. But there's no real slam dunk terrible picks jumping out which is really nice to see after years of well now I've got a level four backwards QST nickelback being picked at the bottom of the second kind of thing there are real improvements uh, going on I think that helps we've got more experienced people but equally we've got some really solid caretakers in place um, now if I'm looking for question marks I'm really not sure about corona at question three uh, question three sorry pick three um it all depends on what Jeff's going for at the Bombers. So Corona is a uh, inside backer, 65 uh, technique. He's got some quickness, which, okay, if you like a bit of niche, uh, niche QSTs in there. He has got quality. He has got the quality potential. So there is a some in there. That's not going to hurt him, is it? Um, and I imagine, I don't know, I know Jeff works a lot and speaks a lot to the to, to the, the Hastings brethren and to Kev Wallace, all of whom have worshipped weird QSTs and done, <laughs> frankly, witchcraft with them over the years. We know that. Um, but I, I don't know. For me, he felt like a very high pick um, for what he actually is and what he's likely to become. Okay, fine. Chuck him on a dev squad for a bit. Um, and I think that will come through in a lot of the things I say today about the dev squad get him up to his 70 tech drop a bit of the strength down and then you've got you know maybe someone slightly more interesting but for me 
yeah, for me, he he sunk uh, a little bit. On the positives, um, Thurlby have picked up sort of, you know, a, a quarterback who, with again a bit of dev squad polish, could be really good. Um, and again, Devils and Warriors. And particularly now we've got what I think is the fantastic feature with the dev squad where you can pay the points to upgrade or you know, to guarantee that improvement. Um, I, I think we've seen much better drafting because of it, because people are looking for that near perfect uh, QST in there. Um, biggest misfire for me, other than Corona, I think is Spitfire of the Sharks. Uh, I'm really sorry. I know Benjamin has been on here before, hasn't he? Unless I'm mistaken. Um, I can't see much second round about Spitfire. OB8, level six, quality linebacker, fine. But his QST is backwards. He's a blitzing outside backer. Again, Tad would probably be dribbling at the thought of a player like that that you can unleash. And that's fine. But I've tried them twice. And it's probably just that I'm terrible at the game. And it just never actually worked. Um I do wonder, sleeper pick within here, Gumby, 40-20-40, elite quarterback. I wonder if letting him drop to that point will come back to haunt us because we have had elites, all of them gone in the top 10 before. So the fact that he went and went and went, we'll see what they come up with there. But I think round two, actually really positive. I've, I've really struggled to find much to gripe about, uh, but I do have to drop in a stealth boast that Spira at pick 32 is already set at level eight. I just have to drop that in there because uh, I don't get much luck with uh, aging of draftees. Uh, so uh, I'm delighted with that one. Round three again, top five, almost perfect. You, you know, it, it, it's good. We're not seeing these high value picks wasted um, because you can see where it's held people back in the past. Um, I'm going back to the Bombers. and I'm so sorry, Jeff. I'm not picking on you, mate. I promise. I'm not sure why the quick... Uh, center was taken at that point I think he's got too high T as well I think that's wasted technique in place there maybe he's got some secret weapons going on there you know if you look at um, round one the Bombers picked the um, high T running back so this could all be some kind of master plan that I'm just not smart enough for um, but I think again pick three just a bit of a waste on that one and then I think all the way down the list, I didn't really have anyone I questioned again until Glasgow. Sorry, Kev. Mm -hmm. uh, the centre, Webster. Level seven, great, fine. And he can play across the line. I'm wondering if that might be the reason for it. But again, 20T is a waste. I think that's a waste. And I think unless you're planning to do some, as I say, remodelling with him, some interior design, um, I don't know. that he. I think he needs a little bit more uh, a little bit more help but again a really solid round and as I've said I think vindication for the GMs if these guys are being used what I think they are being put onto that dev squad for development and for refinement I think that's a big thumbs up to the GMs that it's being used properly um, but that for me is round three and I'll let Tad uh, move on to round four. All right guys uh, for round four we will have uh, I have two honorable mentions one would be the Statesman's. He picked up a 2080 outside linebacker at level four. I think it was a really great pick in round four. And another I'm going to mention will be for the Bulldogs, a 65-35 defensive end, level five. Again, I don't think you can possibly argue with that. Especially a level five, perfect QST, defensive end that late in the game. I think it's a great pick. But I think the winner of round four has got to be the Buccaneers with a perfect QST, 80-20, inside linebacker who happens to be level five and is also resilient. I just think it's a superb pick. And I wish it was me in a way. And now on to round five. An honorable mention will be the Statesman's. People be surprised at this one. It's a 55-45 level six punter. You need to fix your special teams. You need a punter. That was a great pick. But the best pick I would have to say is by the Weasels. Happens to be a 35-65 level three defensive tackle with the leadership one. Yeah, people say level three. No, cool. He, he's perfect QST with a leader. I would have grabbed him too if I was there. 
I wonder how he aged. That'd be nice, huh? He get because he gets be the cool. low level table, right? So that would be nice to know. And that will be on to Kevin now for round five. I mean, excuse me, round six. Yeah, thanks, Dad. Um, when you get to round six, we're starting to get to the stage where it's like, is it a worthwhile pick? Is it not a worthwhile pick? And what you get is you get people to either go for a high level, almost regardless of the QST, which is a bit what Todd did with the Bulldogs. And he picked up a level seven in round six, which is some going. Uh, a running back uh, with a 35, 40, 25 QST. Or you do what Patrick did from the fire, which is basically go for an almost perfect QSD, but a much lower level. Uh, and also Brad from the um, uh, generals did as well. Um, Brad picked up a, an inside back, uh, level two only, but it was 0, 25, 75, which again, not far off uh, perfect at this stage uh, for your linebacker. Uh, and Patrick picked up a um, strong safety. Uh, was it a strong safety? Uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, strong safety, level two, 25, 50, 25. Um, so again, good, solid picks. Um, I'm not going to ask the question because some of you might have actually noticed that uh, in, round, in round six, pick number two, we had a certain Venice Rivets. Now, no idea how on earth they got hold of a pick two in round six. We'll need to ask Tad that question. Uh, but the point is, when you're uh, in sort of round six, you either pick a high level or you pick a, a perfect QST, or you pick somebody that you think might be perfect for your team. And this is a good example of somebody that might be perfect for the team. Because here we're very fortunate to see that Conrad only had one pick but he picked a massive hole in his team because if you look at the trade board, you'll find that Conrad is actually trading his only other punter. And his only other punter is actually a level five, which is the same level as he picked up uh, in this draft. So what he's done, he, he's put Mr. Bumblebee, who was his draft pick, on the DS, uh, level five, and he is 0, 055 45. So he's on a no-lose situation here because he either trades his existing level five quarterback to get a pick for um, Bristol or he keeps him, leaves his new draft pick on the DS and gets it to 0, 60, 40 with maybe another five, another four levels on. Um, so he's going to end up with an absolute monster at punter. So that actually would be my pick of the of round. Uh, would be the punter number four, uh, level five, zero fifty-five forty-five. I wasn't so, aware that the rivets had a punter before now. Yeah, I mean it's, like, it's probably the most underused person in the, in the whole league. But there you go. Didn't that so that's check? round six. So Patrick, what's about round seven and eight? Yeah, you know the most important picks seven and eight, right? Uh, you know for for the team. Um, you know, so round seven, um, uh, Southern Statesman. Inside backer, 18 tooth. Uh, level 2, 2575 QST. Uh, I think that's a wonderful pick for the latter half of round seven. I think getting someone that close is great. Um, you know, dev squad, a candidate there. I think that will probably serve uh, the statesman very well. Um, also my, my big rivals. So, <laughs> um, and then the uh, in round eight, we have the shadows picking up Mr. Irrelevant, actually, and I think this is this, this is why I really was impressed by this pick. What a great nickelback, right? It's a CB22 50-50. Uh, you know, 50 quick, 50 technique, um, level three journeyman. I think it's a great nickelback for Mr. Irrelevant. I mean, that's someone you can just throw in there, you know, throw a couple CPs. They're going to gain levels, and you might get something out of that. You know, I, oftentimes these things don't make it that far, but who knows how the aging role went or anything else. I think it's a great pick in round eight to get that as Mr. Irrelevant, honestly. Um, could be one of those positives where the auto pick actually works out. It could, we had a lot been, of auto yeah, picks yeah. towards the end of that round, didn't we? Yes. And, uh, that could be one of those where it, it pays off. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Who knows? Uh, I'll just, I'll, I'll, 
we'll just assume that it was a it, they meant to and i think that was a great pick uh honestly uh auto pick or otherwise i think just getting that that's a value right there i mean that's a player that might stay on the roster and i, I think that's great um yeah and so now tad special teams all right special teams um uh, you have got to go with the statesmen at pick 118 he picked up a level 9 80 20 returner absolutely superb I was really crushed and heartbroken. I couldn't get him. But, hey, that's where the cookie crumbles. Now, when it also comes to special teams, who improved the special teams the most in this draft? I'll also have to say the statesmen. To Patrick's uh, demise, he plays right with them. So with him picking up that returner and him picking up that punter, and especially last season when the statesmen lost to the fire, twice by a total of eight points I feel that if the statesman had these two players last season it could have flipped that completely right around and then the statesman could have had the division versus the fire so with that said I think absolutely hands down special team statesmen they made a statement this year and now we're going to be off to Kevin again yeah well what I wanted to do guys is just wrap up I mean we've sort of um, we've been doing the show now for when we started, it was a bit of an experiment. Um, and we've now had seven shows, seven different shows, and we've actually managed to, you've seen seven different coaches on the seven different shows. Um, so what we're looking for now is we, we have some coach guest coaches, uh, still lined up, but we're looking now to see if anyone else wants to join us, um, on the show. Uh, and here I want to emphasize that it's not only um big sky coaches that we're looking at more anyone is more than welcome uh so if any coach from any other league wants to come and join us they'll be more than welcome on it because we want to try and keep it as fresh as we possibly can do um so we, we want to get as many uh different coaches uh on what we've been doing week by week is we've been building up our numbers uh and so unless some of you masochists are actually watching this twice uh, then we know for a fact that we've got uh, other coaches from other leagues watching us. Um, so uh, we would like to continue that, and they're more than welcome to come on the show. If anyone does want to come on the show, please just email me, kevinlucy at yahoo.com, put it in the comments, or go to the trade thing. The other thing we want to do is we've now got three weeks before the, po uh, the postseason starts. Uh, so what we're looking for is we're looking for your ideas as to what you'd like to see featured on the show. Um, would you like us to talk about coaching? Would you like us to talk about the trade deals that have gone on? Would you like to us to talk about game planning? Would you like to talk us about the, you know, the best uniforms out there? <laughs> Basically, we will talk about anything that you want us to talk about. Remember, this is your show, guys. Uh, it's our community it's collectively. So we're looking for ideas from you as to what you want to see featured uh, on the show. And with that, I'm going to hand you back to Patrick. Well, I'm glad you said the thing about the uniform because uh, I would love, we should definitely rank uniforms. Like that's fashion what? show, fashion yeah. show, fashion show. Yeah. Maybe it'll make some people finally update their garbage old uniforms. Cause that would be fun. <laughs> that, yeah. That's a challenge. Start doing that now. Cause we're going to do it soon. Um, no, that's great. Uh, yeah. You know, thank you again, Phil. Thank you for joining us uh, again. Um, you know, it was great. I'm, I'm very sad to see how well Lee's draft went. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, that'll be the fire's problem this upcoming season and many to come. Uh, but I know that I love playing against Lee. Um, so, uh, but thank you all so much. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you all to all the viewers and the people who comment. Um, it just, you know, I, I, I'm not going to lie. Every morning after I post these videos, I then go look to see who's commented and it always just kind of warms my heart. It's exciting because, you know, when you, when you post on YouTube, reading the comments is generally a mistake, but we know we have such a tight knit community that I, I really appreciate the comments we get from everyone and the disagreements about some of the things we choose, you know, uh, this is all good fun. Um, we really enjoy it. And I just wanted to say thank you and we'll see you uh, soon. Bye everyone. Bye guys. Bye, Bye guys.